Hello, in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the Flycast emulator. So that allows you to emulate Dreamcast, Naomi, Naomi 2 and Atmos Wave games. This video is for educational purposes only. It does not condone piracy. So uh, Dreamcast is going to be the one that pretty much everyone, you know, wants. Anyway, this is for Mac. I'll be having, I'll be, you know, releasing separate videos for, you know, Windows, you know, Linux, Steam Deck, ROG Alloy X, Android, etc. Everything emulation. This is your channel. So these are a few things that you need. You need the Flycast emulator. I'll show you in a second where to get it from. The BIOS files. I cannot legally show you where to get these from. If you do a quick Google, like Dreamcast BIOS, um, what's it called? Flycast BIOS, you know, you'll find it. It's not difficult. And in general, if you have any questions, feel free to post down in the comments below and I'll, sh I'll help you out. And then you need your game files as well. Again, they're not hard to get hold of. First of all, you want to download Flycast. If you go to just Flycast on Google, you know, the first link really will be the GitHub page. If you go on there, the latest release is actually quite old. And what you want to do instead of type in Flycast GitHub IO, I'll actually provide a link in the description. But here you'll have all of the master and dev builds. You don't want the, you know, the master builds, I mean the dev builds, just because they will be not necessarily stable, they might have crashes, etc. So you want the latest master build, they usually fine. And you go to Mac OS, click download, you'll get hold of it. And the last thing I want to show you that you can also download, this is optional, but you can help, is called the Unarchiver. My favorite unarchiving software. You can download it from the Mac App Store directly. You can download it from the website itself. This is great. If you look, all the files that I have, it's a zip file, two zips. You can just extract it using the built-in tool. Seven zip, I'm pretty sure that works using the built-in tool as well. Um, but some files don't. And if you're getting certain games, it might be like a raw file, for example, the on archiver just helps with that. Again, this is a little extra tip. So first of all, let's install this. So if you double click, you know, extract it, and you can drag this onto applications that is now installed. Double click BIOS. All these files, you know, it covers every single emulator that I mentioned earlier in this video. We'll be installing these very soon. So we'll leave this BIOS folder here. We'll come back to this very shortly. And then there's the game itself. So if I double click that, it'll extract it. And whilst that extracts the game, uh, what we're gonna wanna do is go to, uh, okay, so extracted it. There's the game, I'm gonna copy this. I'll explain the files in a second. I like to put it in my documents, ROMs, Dreamcast, paste it here. It can be on an external drive as well. I recommend that you organize it nicely like so. So if you go in here, there's a few files. Bin is, you know, the, you know, the actual game files themselves. And then you got a document.gdi. So really, there's a few different types of files that you might have excluding bin dot gdi dot cdi dot q dot gdi is a one-to-one -one copy it's the largest of the file sizes and your games can be modded as well as a result um, of the dreamcast game these will provide the best performance the best sort of accuracy dot cdi the games can be you know half the file size even smaller but they might have you know missing audio files or compression you know they can have issues and dot q usually you know you get this with the dot bin but you can ignore that just run the dot gdi just leave it as is and there we go so now let's run the application then we can set up the bios file and the emulator so if i double click that it won't let us run it it's saying you know it's not verified not a problem click done you go to your system settings if it's not there you can just search for it up top like so scroll down and you go to privacy and security scroll down and you go to flycast was blocked click open anyway click open anyway again you're asking for your password this is the password. Ooh, I'm going wrong. There we go. This is the password of your MacBook, not your Apple account. So just bear that in mind. I'm going to close this, close this. Uh, we're not going to open up the directory from here. We're going to go to settings. And sometimes what I find with this emulator, clicking doesn't always work. So I end up using the keyboard most of the time and enter the help that's much better so in here general you're going to leave most of this as default you can change you know your region if you want to uh, your broadcast and region uh, you can change even the type of cable you're technically connected to and if you go there it shows you some information about it and but first of all let's go into here so reveal finder 
Again, keyboard is best. Go to data. This is where you want to put all your emulation files. So if you go to BIOS, just you don't need to extract them. You just drag them over like so. The BIOS is now installed. Okay, next we want to go to content location. This is the folders for your ROM files. So click add. You could have multiple folders. You could have a folder for Naomi, Naomi 2. You could have a folder for Dreamcast. You could have a folder for Amos Wave. If you scroll down, I want to go to documents. Again, this emulator is pretty basic. It doesn't have like the best sort of searching, etc. etc. But as I said, let's go to ROMs. Dreamcast. Okay, everything else you can leave as uh, this fetch box are just make sure they're selected. And now we're going to go to controls. Here you can change your controls. First of all, you can change your Dreamcast device on this Sega controller. That's what you want to do. You can, if you have a game controller, I'll have separate videos covering how to set them up. If you do have one, you can just select it. You'll be able to select it right here. Choose which port it's connected to. <laughs> you can choose to map it as well. And in here, you just choose your controls. So if I want to map this up, press enter, press F. Now it's mapped. I'm going to press it back to up, for example. Then once you are done, you can do Dreamcast controls or arcade controls. I'm going to go to done like so. And now in video, there's a few things that you want to change. You want to change it to Vulcan. That will give you the best performance. Change it to per pixel. That will give you the best accuracy and, and the best image quality. Rendering options, depending on your hardware, but it's a low, uh, you know, a low end emulator or low end console they simulate in. It's, you know, pretty well in terms of performance i just crank it up so like you know 1920 by 1440 this will look good in here if you want to activate widescreen again the original console wasn't meant for widescreen you can do it give some information about it and some super widescreen as well you, you know you might get glitches i prefer not to i prefer to have it in the original way anyway and the rest of this you can almost leave scroll down go to anisotropic filtering put this on 16x this doesn't have a huge impact on performance. This is for the obscure angles to the side. Your textures might look blurry. This helps fix that, fixes that. And everything else you can leave as is. So let's go up top. In audio, leave everything as default. Make sure all your drivers select to auto unless you know a specific you want or you want to set. But do not put it on null. Sometimes I've had emulated ways default null. Network you leave as default. Advanced you can leave as default. And everything else we're good. Click done. There's our games. You can confirm it's working by going to the Dreamcast BIOS. Oh yeah, that good old intro. Okay, so now to close this down, you go to Flycast menu, toggle menu, and you just, again, I prefer using the, the keyboard and mouse. I mean the keyboard and the mouse, I don't find it works very well. Click close game. And now you can launch the game. Yes, you have the Q and the .gdi. If you remember, .gdi is what we want. Click, click enter. So it's just going to load it up. Without the BIOS file, I've, I found that sometimes the games can work, but for the best performance, the best compatibility, you want actual BIOS files. And if I go back to toggle menu, there's a few things here. You can add a cheat. As well, just click add, type the cheat in. It's pretty simple. You can load a cheat. You can do, change the settings here as well. And you can eject disk if you have a different disk, for example. But, you know, using the .gdi, you know, you should all be able to group it together. You can do a save state. And the benefit of saving states is you can save anywhere in the game. It doesn't have to be where the game lets you save. Then you can come back and load and you'll go directly back to that game. You can change slots as well. Here we go. The game is, well, it's, it, you know, it's running now. So that, that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. If you like the video. Yeah. There we go. Play by arcade rules. <laughs> crazy. Yeah, let's make some crazy money. That's the dream. Oh, I am ready. Am I going backwards? There we go. Ooh, so I can run them over. Woo! But yeah, 
that is it that is how you so yeah like if you want, you want to close the game go fly cast toggle menu so you can save the state here go back to where you left off click close game and now uh, again use the keyboard that's the best experience you'll get so if you have lots of games you can filter as well uh, if you have any questions feel free to comment down below if you like the video give it a thumbs up hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell to be notified of when new videos have dropped and let me know what other emulation content you would like to see next look forward to you in the next one take care bye